Hello, good day class. Again, welcome to Science, Technology, and Society. Ako ang inyong professor, si Rayo Jerome C. Tuzon, and I will guide you throughout Lecture 2, The Intellectual Revolutions That Define Society. Pag-uusapan natin kung ano nga ba itong tinatawag natin na intellectual revolutions and kung ano ang epekto nito pagdating sa society natin. Last meeting in Lecture 1, pinag-usapan natin yung relationship between science, technology, and society. And today, we'll be talking about that in those intellectual revolutions o yung mga pagbabago sa science and technology na nagbago ng society o merong malaking impact sa society natin. But for the lesson objectives, we have the following. At the end of the lesson, the learner should be able to, number one, articulate ways by which society is transformed by science and technology, and number two, analyze the concept or ideas proposed by the intellectual thinkers in the field of society. So bear with me and I hope that you're ready to listen to our lecture so that we'll achieve these learning outcomes by the end of the lecture. First and foremost, let's try to answer the question, how important is knowledge? Kahalaga, kahalaga sa'yo ang knowledge. Ano? Ano bang importance sa knowledge sa bawat tao? Now that we know the importance of science and technology to society, alam na natin yung relationship between science and technology in society. Diba? Sa lecture number one natin, nakita natin na society benefits or ultimately makes life easier through technology. But for us to improve technology, we must invest and give to the scientific body of knowledge. Ngayon, nakikita natin, gano'n ka ba importante ang knowledge para sa'yo? Sa'yo, ikaw na nakikinig ngayon, as a person, how important is knowledge to you? Remember, lahat ng nalalaman mo ngayon, it is all knowledge. All of the information that you know, all of the routine that you will do, and everything that you will say and, and think, those are all products of knowledge. It makes you wonder kung gaano nga ba importante ang knowledge. And in fact, mapapaisip ka, may buhay ba pag walang knowledge? May survival ba pag walang knowledge? In our meeting last time, or in lecture one, napag-usapan natin yung kinatawag natin paradigm shifts. And sinabi ni Thomas Kuhn sa kanyang paradigm shifts is that science is no longer an accumulation of new ideas. Instead, science is improved by scientific revolution. Pinag-usapan natin before yung definition ng science. It is a systematized body of knowledge which aims to describe or predict nature and the universe. At paano nga ba nagkakaroon ng body of knowledge na yun? Nagkakaroon ng body of knowledge na yun dati sa accumulation of new ideas. Dahil nga wala pa tayong masyadong alam sa environment or sa natural world or even sa, sa outer space or sa galaxy or sa, or sa new one, saan mo pa man maisip, wala pa tayong masyadong alam dati. Kaya dati pag may scientific investigation, pag meron kang observations of the natural world, tanggap ng tanggap yung science, science as the body of knowledge. Pero sabi ni Thomas Kuhn, hindi na dapat ganito yung kaso. Dahil meron na tayo enough knowledge at meron na tayo enough understanding of the natural world and even the universe, we must, we must change our point of view on science. Na ang science ay hindi lang dapat or hindi na dapat pangongolekta lang at paglikom lang ng knowledge, it should be based on scientific revolutions. Ano ba itong scientific revolutions na ito? Yun ang pag-uusapan natin today. Science is not moved by a rational process anymore, but more by a social unity. So, ang ibig sabihin po, hindi na dapat or hindi lang dapat based on so on 
uh, rational process yung information na makukuha sa science. Instead, dapat yung mga information na ito, kine-question to. Pilit na binabago, pilit na gumagawa ng mga bagong explanation of the natural world. Dahil sa mga bagong examples, sa mga bagong situations, hindi naman laging applicable ang science, lalong-lalo na kung ito ay outdated science. That is why, hindi nawawala ang scientist. Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na, at ah, tama na yung science, may marami na tayong alam. At ah, tama na research, marami na tayong alam. Hindi po po pwedeng sabihin yun. Because every time that there are new knowledge, there must be a revolution. Dapat questionin yung old knowledge. Di ba? Parang sa pagchika lang yan or parang sa pakikipaglikom lang yan ng informasyon sa mga kapitbahay mo. May sinabi sa ganito or may chinika sa'yo. For example, si Si Juan daw nang aliwa kay ano kay Juana nang aliwa kay Juana. Yan ang sabi ni Juana. Tapos nalaman mo sabi ni Juan na si Juana pa lang nang aliwa. Papapaisip ka ano kayang tama? Pareho sila may sinabing rason, pareho sila may sinabing information. Pero alam nat na may iisa lang na tama doon. Di ba? And in that case, kailangan magkaroon ng challenge. Kailangan magkaroon ng revolution. Kailangan i-challenge ni Juana yung sinabi ni Juan or ni Juan yung sinabi ni Juana para malaman kung ano yung pinakamagandang explanation, kung ano yung pinakamagandang description of the natural world. Which is why research is continuous, science is continuous, It is for the advancements of technology and for the for achieving a better explanation and prediction of the natural world and even the universe. Ganun po kaimportante ang knowledge and ganun po na bago ang proseso ng knowledge sa mula sa pangongolekta ng information patungo sa pagkakaroon ng scientific revolution. What does it mean to buy intellectual revolution? Throughout history, there have been numerous absolute limits. Ang absolute limits po ay yung akala ng tao na alam na nila lahat ng dapat nilang malaman. Throughout history, ang dami nang kasabi niyan. They were all saying that they, they know all they needed to know. People said that some things will forever be hidden from mortal eyes. In fact, some people even said that they should not understand the world because the, un- the world is not meant to be understood. And that is wrong. Because every time sa bawat paniniwala ng tao na nandun na sila sa absolute limit nila, they were sa bawat paniniwala ng tao na hanggang doon na lang ang dapat niya malaman o nalaman niya na dapat lahat ng malaman, mali sila. First, the world is a natural whole that, is, that supernatural forces do not make things happen. Quote and quote. Dahil ang mundo natin ay nilikha. O, well, because our world exists Naturally, as a whole, walang kahit anong force sa mundo natin and even sa galaxy, sa universe, and even sa beyond the earth, I cannot be explained by science. Lahat na nangyayari in the natural world and in the environment and throughout the galaxies, the universe, can all be explained through science. Because naniniwala tayo na meron tayong secondly tinatawag na natural order. 
There are laws that govern, govern nature. And in governing nature, we cannot say that we know everything. Because there are some things that are yet to be explored, that are, that are yet to be described, and are yet a mystery for the human race. And when they were wrong, there lies revolution. Isipin mo ganito. Akala ng tao na, ni- na rich na nila lahat ng dapat nilang malaman. And every time, mali sila. Kasi nagkakaroon ng mga panibagong scientific discovery, panibagong scientific information na nagkukos ng intellectual revolution. This means a sudden change in the belief system of people. Because of science and technology coinciding with intellectual thinkers, there will always be changes in how we think about our world. These revolutions passed and will always define our society. Those changes in our beliefs, those changes in the information, in the knowledge that we have today, yun ang lagi mag define ng ating society. I will show you that later. This is also synonymous, synonymous to what we know as the paradigm shift. Now, society is transformed by science and technology. I've said before na every time there were limits to people or nilalagyan nila ng limits sa sarili nila every time they were wrong. And I will show you several examples kung paano ito nangyayari. Kung paano natin ito nakita throughout history. Several examples lang. Unang-una, we have Nicholas Copernicus. Nicholas Copernicus was a mathematician and astronomer. He proposed that the sun is stationary and is the center of the universe and earth revolved around it. This is the heliocentric model. From the term itself means helios and centric is the center. Now, this is the revolution. Ito yung panibagong paniniwala. Ito yung dagdag information. Ito yung new knowledge, new scientific theory. Para sa body of science. Ano yung dati, sir? Yung dati kasi ay, ay described by Ptolemy in 100 AD. It was a time before Nicholas Copernicus. His work was the one replaced by Copernicus' work. He made the geocentric model. Geo meaning geo-earth, centric as the center. Ptolemy in 100 AD proposed the geocentric model of the universe. Sinabi niya na yung, yung Earth ay nasa gitna ng universe. And at that time, pansinin ninyo, 100 AD binigay ni Ptolemy itong scientific theory niya. And kailan na bago yung birth ni Nicholas Copernicus? Hindi pa ngayon 1473, syempre. It was in his lifetime na nagkaroon ng panibagong theory in 1473 to 1543. Almost 1,500 years after Ptolemy. Because when Ptolemy proposed the geocentric model of the universe, walang nag-question dito. Lahat naniwala dito. Lahat naging contento. Sinabi, ah, ito na. Ito na yung limit ng paniniwala natin. Wala nang kailangang baguhin. Nandito na yung pinaka-elegant the most elegant and the most sophisticated explanation. But after 1,500 years or 1,500 years, nagkaroon ng panibagong explanation sa models of the solar system. At yun yung kay Nicholas Copernicus, heliocentric model of the universe. Iniisip mo, sir, paano na bago to? Sir, hindi ko alam kung bakit, kung bakit tama si Copernicus, mali si Ptolemy. Well, when we mathematically graph the universe kasi, 
Or ito kasi yung dating propose. O ito yung paniniwala, di ba? Yung paniniwala si Ptolemy sa geocentric model of the universe. Ptolemy believed in the geocentric model of the universe or the geocentric theory. Wherein the, the earth is the middle of the moon and the sun. Yan ang pinapaniwalaan ni Ptolemy. And for 1,500 years, itong pinapaniwalaan ng tao. Pero, it was when Nicholas Copernicus proposed the, geoce- the, helio- sorry, the heliocentric theory na nagbago yung paninita ng tao. Na yung sun yung nasa gitna ng solar system and yung earth re- revolves around the sun. Sir, paano, paano dumating sa puntong to? Si Copernicus. Paano na naisip to? Well, sinabi nga natin before, Copernicus is an, is an astronomer and a mathematician. He made a theory and he observed na kung ifa-follow natin yung geocentric model of the universe, hindi dapat ganito. Hindi ganito ka-elegante yung itsura. Ano dapat, sir? Dapat po ganito. Kung naniniwala tayo sa geocentrism, kung saan yung earth yung nasa gitna, eh dapat ganito yung pattern ng ibang celestial bodies. Kasi ginagraph mathematically yung gravitational pull. ba? Diba? Kung geocentrim nga ang totoo, ibig sabihin yung pattern ng pag-ikot ng mga celestial bodies affect each other. At dahil nag affect each other sila, they will not make an eclipse. Wala sana yung mga paniniwala sa revolution ng rotation, di ba? Mathematically speaking, geocentrism was wrong. And yung tamang model of the solar system is heliocentrism. That is why ito ay isang intellectual revolution. Because dati, or bago pa man dumating si Copernicus, naniniwala yung tao na yun, yun na yung pinakatama. Yung geocentrism na yun na yung pinakatamang paniniwala. Yun pala, maipapropose si Copernicus na mas tama, mas elegante, mas mathematically correct na model of the solar system. At dahil din, nagkaroon ng tamang model of the solar system, this paved a way for us to better understand other celestial bodies. Hindi tayo nalito. Bakit tayo hindi nalito, sir? Kasi sa geocentrism, nakakalito talaga kasi walang pattern. Walang regularity. And in heliocentrism, there lies the pattern and a more elegant, better, and more knowledgeable solution or even observation of celestial bodies. This was also called as the initiator of the scientific revolution. Copernicus' concept of the universe was the, was the start of a change in a way that the world was viewed. Nakita nila na may limits pala. Sorry. Na yung limits pala na nakapataw sa atin should not be observed directly. Dahil sa work ni Nicholas Copernicus, people started to question other scientific theories. People, uh, people thought People for, first thought that they were at their limits. Akala nila nasa limits sa sila. Pero dahil kay Nicholas Copernicus, dahil sa panibagong theory ni Nicholas Copernicus, people started to doubt what they already know and started to find more scientific evidence. And ultimately, ito yung kailangan for scientific revolution. Yung drive to search for new explanation, for a better explanation of the scientific world and to better our scientific knowledge of the world. Because of this, it was termed as the initiator of the scientific revolution. Next, we have Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin was born from 1809 and died in 1882. He was an English naturalist, geologist, and biologist. He 
He was best known for his contributions to the science of evolution. He had two evolutionary theories. First is on the origin of the, spe of, of the species. And second is the descent of man. These two beliefs or these two theories have the following descriptions. Ano nga ba itong mga theories na ito, sir? Pag-usapan nat muna natin yung origin of the species. Now, Charles Darwin said that there is a term called natural selection. Natural selection is also coined or can be described as survival of the fittest. It is the process by nature by which organisms better adapted to the environment tend to survive and reproduce more than those less adapted to their environment. From the word itself, we have the word survival of the fittest. Sir, does this mean the species or the individual that is more thinner, more slender survives? Not necessarily. The fittest, take it or kunin natin yung word na fittest as not literally. Let's take it figuratively. Survival of the fittest meaning in the changing environment, kung sino mang individual na makakasurvive, siya yung mabubuhay. Marahil ay narinig nyo na yung term na ito. At nalam, alam, nyo to, na, alam nyo na term na ito sa mga hayop. Di ba? Pero, this also works for society. If you cannot adapt to your environment, you are most prone to die. <clears throat> Ngayon, sinasabi ni Charles Darwin na your natural selection is nature's way to find out kung sino yung mga individuals na mas fitted for the environment. Na more fit to the environment. These individuals, they are the ones to survive. Example, yung antibiotic resistance. Antibiotic resistance, the ability of a bacteria to withstand the effects of antibiotics in consequence to evolution. There are some bacteria that requires a higher dosage of antibiotics. Diba? And there are some bacteria na isang inom mo lang ng biogesic, or sorry, bioflu, eh, and nawawala na. Nawawala na. Ang antibiotic resistance is a trait that helps bacteria to survive in an antibiotic environment. Kaya nga hindi, tayo, hindi dapat ikaw umiinom ng antibiotics ng walang prescription. Bakit? Yung dosage, yung concentration ng antibiotics, yun yung nakaka -apekto. Sa, sa mga bacteria na ito. If masyadong mababa yung inyong dosage, if masyadong mababa ang inyong concentration, instead na ma-terminate mo yung mga bacteria, ma-terminate mo yung protists na naka-infect sa'yo, eh, you are making them stronger. You are providing an environment in which they can evolve and develop antibiotic resistance. Isipin mo sa isang tao, kapag dinala mo ang isang tao na walang trabaho or <clears throat> dilagay mo isang tao na walang trabaho sa corporate world o pinasok mo agad siya sa isang opisina, galing siya sa probinsya, syempre hindi siya makaka-adjust. Mamamatay siya. In our, in our case, hindi mo mamamatay directly. Ha? Hindi makaka-adjust sa opisina, hindi makaka-keep up. Pero kung yung tao na ito, kahit galing siyang probinsya, eh dinala mo kunwari muna sa pinag-aral mo ng math, mas pinag-aral mo ng encoding, pinag-aral mo computer, bago mo dinala sa opisina, siyempre magsusurvive siya. 
In the same way, kapag iisipin mo tong tao na to, yung bacteria, hindi mo dapat gawin na mag-survive siya, di ba? Hindi dapat natin naisin na mag-survive siya. Eh kung painom-inom ka ng antibiotic, para na rin pinag-aral mo tong bacteria, para na rin binigyan mo siya ng information, para na, para na rin binigyan mo siya ng tools para siya mismo mag-evolve at siya mismo ay mag-survive sa katawan mo at tumagal ang infection. Ganun yun, ganun ang natural selection. Ang hindi makaka-survive sa environment ay hindi makaka Ang hindi makaka-adapt sa environment ay hindi makaka-survive. Yun din ang dahilan kung bakit may mga hayop tayo sa before na wala na ngayon. Dahil hindi sila naka-adapt sa changing environment natin. Lalong-lalo na nung ice age, the extinction of animals. The mammoth in the ice age. And different animals natin ngayon. Different plants. It is always, it is because they did not adapt to the environment. Say for example, each species show variation. Diba? <clears throat> Ito rin yung tinatawag natin Lamarck's giraffes. Ano? In Lamarck's giraffes, meron tayong mga original short that ancestor. Lamarck's giraffes. This was an, an observation by Lamarck. He said that there were uh, there were giraffes or giraffes hindi naman talaga mahahabang leeg before. However, nang maubos ang pagkain dahil ang mga giraffes ay nakatira sa savanna wherein you food ay hindi laging plentiful. Ay kailangan nila maghanap ng leaves para kainin sa mga puno. Kaya ang puno tumutubo at tumatangkad. So, ang nangyayari, dahil kailangan nila na mabusog, kailangan nila na hindi mamatay sa kogutuman, kailangan nilang mag-stretch lagi, mag-practice lagi ng leeg, mag-unat lagi ng leeg, hanggang sa yung mga susunod na generation, yung mga susunod na, spe- na offspring na lumabas, ay eh meron ng traits that would help them survive in the environment. Yun ang tinatawag natin survival of the feet. You are adjusting to, env- to the environment up to a point na you are comfortable living in that environment. And you can say that you survived. That you were naturally selected by nature to survive. Kasi syempre, yung mga hayop na hindi kaya mag-survive, eh, hindi, ma- ha- hindi mare-resolve ba? Hindi mare-resolve ang kanilang mga needs. So, for example, may dalawang species. Merong mahabang leeg, merong maliit ang leeg. There is competition. Sa isang area, lagi may competition. Eh, ano mangyayari? Siyempre, yung better adapted, yung ginawa na mas okay, yung evolutionary speaking better in all forms, yun yung magsusurvive. Kaya sa isang environment na yung mga puno, yung source ng pagkain, siyempre, kung mamimili ka sa mahabang leg or may clean leg, tataya ka dun sa mahaba leg. Kasi alam natin na mas makaabot niya yung pagkain. Therefore, sinasabi natin na itong mga survivors are chosen naturally. And these, survivor, these survivors will pass their better genes to their offspring who will also show this beneficial variety. So yung trait na ito ipapasa sa mga offspring and they will get and the offspring will have the traits needed to survive in that environment. Yan ang tinatawag na natural selection ni Charles Darwin. No? And this is a good description of how nature selects 
which species will survive. Then we have the descent of man. Charles Darwin stated that, ma that humans and apes share a common ancestor, that man descended from apes. Ito yung sinasabi ni Charles Darwin, the descent of man. Ngayon, class, remember that si Charles Darwin would not make an assumption so boldly at that time, lalo na noong 1871, kung saan medyo malaki yung Christianity at wala pang separation of the church and the state without scientific evidence. Charles Darwin proposed the descent of man because of evidences. Isa na doon, yung, yung ating skeletal structure. Kung titignan natin yung skeletal structure as compared natin eh, yung man, ito yung man, compare natin sa gorilla, chimpanzee, orangutan, and gibbon. Halos pare-pareho. Well, Medyo magkakalayo naman talaga. Pero kung papansinin mo, yung phalanges, pareho yung kamay. Diba? Pareho yung structure ng rib cage. Pareho yung spinal cord and so on and so forth. And there are many archaeological uh, artifacts that say that the scent of man is indeed correct. And this is one of those intellectual revolutions that changed, that forever changed our belief system. Dahil naniniwala na tayo that there are possible evolutions that cause speciation. Plus yung speciation, yung pagkakaroon ng pag-iibang-ibang species as a product of evolution. And ito yung one of the one of the greatest example of that speciation, the descent of man. So yun yung dalawang paniniwala and dalawang discovery ni Charles Darwin that changed, that revolutionized science. Then we have Sigmund Freud in 1856 to 1939. Sigmund Freud was an Austrian phys physician who emphasized the role of psychoanalysis in dealing with personality. Sigmund Freud was the foremost physician that described psychoanalysis. In psychoanalysis, it is the way people behave is influenced by their unconscious drive. Yung behavior daw ng tao ay merong pinaghuhugutan. At itong pinaghuhugutan na ito ay nakalagay sa malalim na pag-iisip ng tao na tinatawag na unconscious drive. Say-say natin. Now, sinasabi ni Freud na meron tayong three levels of mind. Meron tayong conscious mind, pre-conscious mind, and unconscious mind. Say-say natin muna to. Ngayon, sinasabi ni Sigmund Freud na meron tayong conscious mind. Yung conscious mind or the conscious mind consists of our thoughts, desires, and wishes which we are aware or, or, or sorry, aware of or can be recalled at any time. Sa ngayon, nagsasalita ako. Sa ngayon, nakikinig ka. Sa ngayon, nakatingin ka sa screen. Nakasaksak ang earphones. Binabasa yung nasa slide. Yun yung conscious mind. Kung nasaan ka ngayon, marahil ay eh, nag-iisip ka na sa crush, nagugutom ka, gusto mong kumain. Yun yung kung anong meron ka ngayon, conscious mind. What is going on in your mind right now? That is the conscious mind. Your current state of awareness. Right now, iniisip ko yung kasunod na step. Iniisip ko kung paano ko explain yung kasunod na step. And ito, lahat ito, parte ng conscious mind. Nararamdaman ko na medyo may sakit yung lalamunan ko. Gusto ko uminom ng tubig. 
This is all part of the conscious mind. Yung kaya mo agad sabihin, nasasabi mo agad, nade-describe mo agad, yun yung conscious mind. And that is also called as the lowest level. Next, we have the unco- or the pre-conscious mind. The pre-conscious mind is located between the unconscious and conscious mind. It consists of experiences that we are not aware of but are made conscious by simply focusing on them. For example, if one were to ask another what she ate yesterday for lunch, this would require recalling pre-conscious thought. For example, tanungin kita, anong kinain mo kaninang almusal? Hindi siya agad, pero iisipin mo, di ba? O papaisip ka, ano nga bang kinain ko kanina? Di ba? Pag tinanong ka, anong favorite, uh, anong favorite uh, subject mo nung elementary ka? Hindi siya agad, di ba? Iisipin mo pa, uh, mahilig yata ako nung sa science. Yun yung pre-conscious mind na sinasabi ni Freud. Lahat ng information na hindi ka agad aware, pero kung magpo-focus ka at iisipin mo, maririkol mo. Lahat, actually, lahat ng information or karamihan ng information na alam mo ay nasa pre-conscious mind. For example, paano mag-divide? So, alam mo yun, nasa pre-conscious mind mo. Kailangan mo lang tandaan. Anong definition ng word na rendezvous? So, rendezvous. Diba? Anong definition ng word na silhouette? Di ba? Al- iisipin mo, i-recall mo. Lahat yan nasa pre-conscious mind. So, yung, yung conscious mind, yan yung alam mo ngayon or estado mo ngayon. Yung pre-conscious mind ay yung information naman na hindi ngayon, pero pwede mong i-recall kung magpo-focus ka. Ano naman, sir, unconscious mind? So, unconscious mind is the highest level of mind that contains repressed urges, thoughts, memories, and wishes which are disturbing or even threatening. Yung unconscious mind, yung sinasabi ni Sigmund Freud, ay yung location kung nasaan lahat ng inner desire, lahat ng mga past trauma, and lahat ng mga animalistic behavior ay nagre-reside. At ito ay masama dahil hindi natin ito malalagay sa awareness natin. Madalas sinasabi pa ng mga ibang tao to, Uy, parang ibang klase ka na. Uy, ano nangyayari sa'yo? Dahil sa atin, hindi natin naiisip yan. Unconscious mind natin yan eh. The unconscious mind is sometimes referred to as the subconscious mind. It is the highest level of the mind that contains repressed urges, thoughts, memories, and wishes which are disturbing and threatening. They could not be easily accessed unless they are brought upon by the surface by psychoanalysis or psychotherapists. For example, uh, one good example of this is the state of mental health of people nowadays. Diba? Ano nga ba nararamdaman mo dahil sa COVID-19 virus? Dahil sa lockdown natin, sobrang dahil. Dahil sa mga nangyari sa buhay natin the past year. Di ba? At ito yung mga pakaramdam, mga emotion, mga thoughts na nasa unconscious mind natin. And hindi agad-agad natin itong masasabi. Kapag nasasabi mo agad, madalas sa pre-conscious mind yan. Pero, this can be brought out by therapists or psychoanalysts. Ana- analysis. Oftentimes, thoughts within the unconscious mind are unorganized. And they are based slow, uh, solely on pleasures and desires and are usually in conflict with society. Ito yung tinatago nating thoughts, desires na madalas or minsan hindi in agreement sa mga laws ng society. And they should stay unconscious 
unless otherwise needed. Yan yung tinatawag nating conscious mind, pre-conscious mind, and unconscious mind. Sabi ni Freud, meron daw tayong tatlong klase mind and tatlong steps or tatlong level sa ating mind. At yun yung tatlong yun. Pero meron din tayong tinatawag na structures of personality. Ano naman structures of personality? Sinasabi ni Sigmund Freud na yung personality daw natin ay meron tatlong pinaguhugutan. May tatlong halo-halo. ba? Diba? Unang-una dyan yung id. Id is also called as the pleasure principle. This is the animalistic nature of man. The id is the primary, or sorry, primitive and instinct instinctive component of personality. It consists of all the inherited components of personality present at birth, including cells, sex instinct, eros, and the aggressive instinct, tanatos. Ang id principle or, or, or id personality, parte po nat, parte ng personality natin yan. Hindi natin kaya i-tanggalin yan. Pwede natin i-repress Pwede natin kontrolin, pero somehow we have that inherent personality sa katawan natin and sa pag-iisip natin and sa mind natin. Next, we have the ego, the reality principle, the human nature of man. The ego develops to mediate between the unrealistic id and the external real world. Now, sinasabi kanina ni Sigmund Freud, meron tayong id yung personality natin, yung animalistic tendencies natin. Sure, di ba, ibig sabihin nun, lagi tayong, ano, lagi, da, dapat justified yung mga, ano, yung mga kaso ng mga, ano, kasi di ba, natural lang naman yung personality nila. Hindi po. Crime is a crime. At alam ni ego yan. Kasi yung ego personality is also part of the personality. And the ego develops to mediate between the unrealistic id and the external real world. Kaya po tayo hindi nagpapaka, ano, nagpapaka-savage at walang classing or walang class na tao ay dahil meron po tayong ego. The ego works by reason. Sometimes, tinatawag din natin itong konsensya. Kaya may mga bagay na hindi ka ginagawa. Eh dahil meron tayong ego, reality principle, uy, reality check muna, tama pa ba yung ginagawa mo? Dahil ang ego natin works by reason. Whereas the id is chaotic and unreasonable. Next, we have the super ego, the conscience principle. The super ego incorporates the values and morals of society which are learned from one's parents to another. The superego's function is to control the id's impulses, especially those which society forbids, such as sex and aggression. It also has the function of persuading the ego to turn to moralistic goals rather than simply realistic ones, and to strive for perfection. Say for example, id. Uh, example lang itong ano, uh, situation. Gutom ka. Nakita mo itong taong to, itong lola na ito may pagkain. Gutom na gutom ka na. Nakita mo yung pagkain na hawak, mo, hawak niya at gusto mong kunin. Yun yung id na principle. The id principle tells us to, or sinasabi natin, desire sa atin na kunin mo na, kunin mo na, kunin mo, kunin mo. Gutom ka eh. Pero, papasok yung yung ego personality natin. Teka, bubusog ka ba doon? Saging lang yung hawak doon. Eh. Teka, pag kinuha mo yun, eh, baka sumigaw yung lola at hulihin ka ng polis. Di ba? Teka, pag kinuha mo yun, mas hassle yata kaysa sa ano, benefit. Saging lang yun. Eh. Doon ka pasok yung ego principle. Ngayon, super ego naman, beyond the ego principle na. Ah, hindi ko dapat isipin yun. Kasi ako, nakakakain naman ako kada araw. Ngayon lang, gutom ako. Si Lola, hindi lagi nakakain araw-araw. Dapat ko pa nga siyang tulong. 
doon papasok si super ego. So kahit po may id principle na tinatawag, dapat yung ego and super ego, they would control the id. <clears throat> Yun yung idea ni Sigmund Freud. Meron yung personality natin has three sources. The id, the ego, the super ego. The id tells us that you want something, na meron kang desire. Yung ego, nagsasabi na yung mga reason na bakit hindi mo agad makukuha yung desire na yon. At yung super ego, nandyan yung values. Yung morals na involved. So, yun yung tatlong na nag, tatlong nag interplay at tatlong nangyayari sa isipan natin palagi as a personality. Ed is the instincts, ego is the re- reality, and super ego is the morality. Sigmund Freud defined psychoanalysis and the mind and psychotherapy. Kaya tayo may understanding ngayon kung anong dapat ang knowledge at kung ano dapat yung tama at mali sa society eh, dahil in-explain ni Freud to. And we better, we better understand na kapag, for example, may kasalanan ng tao, hindi lang siya, sina- hindi siya, hindi natin masabi na tinulok ng demonyo. Hindi. Kasi that person himself or herself has an id principle. Tinalikuran niya lang yung ego, super ego niya. That is why We must hold accountability sa mga tao na gumawa ng masasama at against the law and against moralistic value. value. <clears throat> the id is the innate desires, the pleasure-seeking and aggression and so, so, sexual impulse. The superego is the moral, ethical, values and parental needs. And the ego is the mature, adaptive behavior. And this all transcends to your personality. When the id tells us, I want it now, the superego says, good people don't think about those things. And the ego is the mediator between those two. Bakit? Kasi kung tatalikuran mo fully yung id mo, well, hindi ka magsusurvive. Diba? For example, baligtaran natin sitwasyon. Ikaw yung gutom na gutom at walang pera. Minsan, nasusuppress ang super ego at ego para sa id. Kasi id, first and foremost, is a survival personality. Kung paano ka magsusurvive. Nga lang, it just so happens that that survival morality sometimes crosses the ego and the super ego. Ganto po yun. The conscious mind is in the ego. Pre-conscious mind hi- lies the super ego and the unconscious l- level lies the end. Next, we have information technology. There's no one proponent for information technology. The discovery of the internet and its effect on society completely changed society. In fact, sa bringing ng children, makikita natin to agad. Di ba? Nearly everyone is a proud owner of some form of technology, whether it be a mobile phone, iPad, laptop, tablet, or even the desk. And that change in information technology brought about a change or a plethora of different application of technology-based businesses. Diyan yung online shopping like Lazada, Shopee, Amazon. Yung pa mind mind hindi naman niya magiging available lahat kung wala tayong information technology. Kung walang advancement sa ICT. Nandyan din yung mga bagong klasing trabaho. Yung pagiging streamer, YouTuber, talang yung bawat bata, yun ang gusto nila, yun ang pangarap nila ngayon. Dahil alam nila, That businesses changed. Nagbago yung business, napunta sa IT, napunta sa ICT. Yun yung nakikita nila mga vlogs na mayayaman ngayon. Yung mga tao na nag-stream, nag-YouTube, and even sa cryptocurrency, nagkaroon na Axie Infinity, 
Bitcoin. And this change, or this completely change how the world works. Diba? Ang daming bagong platforms, even sa Filipino, sa mga ibang bansa, na wala naman dati. Mga trabaho na nagbago, or mga bagong klaseng trabaho, na akala datin dati, eh, nung bata tayo, eh, hindi naman viable source of income. Hindi natin akalain, di ba? Hindi natin akalain, nakikita ang tao dito. Pero nakita natin na, kumikita sila. They're earning. And this is a viable source of income. The technology reshaped the world. Hindi lang ito base or hindi lang, hindi lang wag natin tignan lang yung societal effects ng technology. Kung hindi, ang technology improved our everyday lives and opened new horizons in science and technology. Dahil sa paggamit ng tao, dahil sa pagkakaroon ng socialization sa technology, eh nagkaroon din ng Nag- this paved a way for artificial intelligence. Ha? Huh? Yung prosthetics natin ngayon sobrang advanced na up to a point na parang pakiramdam mo may kamay ka na kahit putol yung kamay mo. Sobrang daming advancements in technology that reshape the world and change the world entirely. It provides the people with the tools and the equipment to improve and supplement learning, working, entertainment, and even socialization. But there are, however, questions of its limits and human morality and ethics at stake. Thank you for listening for lecture one, lecture two. Sorry or the intellectual revolutions that define society. Today, we talked about, first and foremost, the importance of knowledge. We talked about <clears throat> the meaning of the word, the word intellectual revolutions. We talked about surpassing the limits of every person's understanding of the world. We even talked about society as it is transformed. By science and technology. Pinag-usapan natin, di ba? Yung discovery or yung Copernican Revolution. Pinag-usapan natin ang Darwinian Revolution by Charles Darwin. And pinag-usapan natin ang Freudian Revolution by Sigmund Freud. And we also talked about the information and technology and its impact to the world and society and even to science. If you have any questions, Feel free to ask them or to comment them in this video or comment them in the Google Classroom. After listening or watching this lecture, please proceed to Activity 1.2 which is posted in the Classroom. So you need to open the file included in this post. There, there you will see a worksheet for you to answer. It will require you to answer the following. To create a summary of what you've learned by completing the table provided. And answer several ref- reflective questions on our topic today. When you open the file in the Google Classroom, you will find this. This is your worksheet for today. Or activity 1.2, Intellectual Revolutions that Define Society. Ano? For the directions, answer what is asked for each of the questions written in the activity. Roman numeral number 1, you need to create a summary of what you've learned by completing the table below. <clears throat> Provide a short explanation in each, of the, in each of your answers. You may supplement your answers, however, plagiarism or copying of any kind will not be tolerated. Okay, here you have three rows for you to answer. Ano? And each, of, each row has a specific researcher or scientist in our case. Okay. Asagutan lang po kung anong tinatanong sa bawat column natin. Sa first column natin, makikita natin ito ang proposed theory. Ano ba yung theory na nagawa ng bawat isang scientist na ito? Or ano yung intellectual revolution na binigay nila? Next, the second column or the third column in our case, pinag-uusapan yung opposed theory. 
ano ba yung dating paniniwala? Sinabi natin na akala ng tao nasa limit na sila. Tapos nagkaroon ng intellectual revolution. ba? Diba? Dito mo ilalagay yung, revol- yung intellectual revolution and dito mo ilalagay yung limit. Sir, wala naman po sa PowerPoint yung limit. Tandaan, class, you, are, you may supplement your answers from the internet but you should not plagiarize or copy the work of others. Yun ang sasagot sa ating second column. And the last column, pag-uusapan nyo or sasagutan ninyo yung effects on you as a person and society as a whole. So, sasagutan ninyo kung anong epekto ng proposed theory or yung intellectual revolution na yun para sa'yo as a person or at saka para sa society as a whole. Then, we have Roman numeral number two. The Roman numeral number two is a reflection. After what you have learned in our lesson and, our, and on your answers on Roman numeral number one, answer each of the reflective questions in three to five sentences each. That will be 30 points. Ano? Here you have different questions for you to answer reflectively in three to five sentences lang po. Okay? So what are your opinions with the new society made by the evolution of information communication technology? Provide an insightful answer. What do you think would happen if, if, the, if intellectual revolutions did not take place? And lastly, why exactly is knowledge important to you as a person and for the benefit of society? Class, I hope that you learned something today and I'm looking forward to read all of your answers for Activity 1.2, Intellectual Revolutions that Define Society. Again, we had our lecture 2, The Intellectual Revolutions that Define Society, and I hope that you learned something today. I'll see you next week. Goodbye class, and please take care of yourself.